and his mercy and his peace be among us. A number of churches, well, all over the United States and around the world, just so to speak, have begun using a ceremony that has, well, become fairly popular. It's called the blessing of the animals. Oftentimes it's done in October as a part of a celebration of the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi. Well, a few years ago, the Associated Press went to one of these services to see what was happening. It was in San Francisco, and people gathered, and they brought their pets, their rabbits, their dogs, their cats, and even a few horses. One of the people who came had a cat, and the cat was afraid of everything. She had it in a little bag, but it curled up inside when it heard the people around. She was hoping that if she got her cat blessed, he would be more outgoing. Another person brought a dog along, an Eskimo, American Eskimo dog. This dog had a problem in that it chewed on everything, the furniture, the rugs, you name it. It would just destroy everything. And when you tried to call it or give it a command, it just didn't pay any attention at all. Its owner was hoping that the blessing of the animals would be sort of an exorcism for him. Well, the uh, rite of blessing of the animals took place, and the people brought their dogs home and their cats and their rabbits and their horses. It was supposed to be a great event. Well, blessing. We hear that word used a lot in time to time. It's certainly used often in Scripture. Oftentimes when we're at a, a drive-in, we're picking up some food, the person will hand us our food and then say, have a blessed day, or the checkout at a store, department store, and the like say, have a blessed day. But what does it really mean to have a blessed day? What does it mean to be blessed? Well, St. Paul in the first chapter of Ephesians, which we read just a few moments ago, has these words, praise be to God and Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless. And in love, he predestined us for the adoption of sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To receive God's blessing is to be touched by his grace. It's to be chosen for his purpose, and it is to be adopted into the family of God. Now, a lot of people think automatically that to be blessed means you get something. You're blessed. You've gotten something. You've gotten a new job, a better job. Uh, you won a prize, something like that. But being blessed can mean something much more enriching than that. A man was getting his groceries, and the young person who was bagging the groceries had Down syndrome. He mastered the job of bagging those groceries well and put them in the cart. The person who bought the groceries was getting ready to push his cart out to his truck, but the Check the, the person doing the bagging said, no, I'll take them for you. And so he pushed the, the cart out to the truck, put the bags of groceries in the back, and just did it so neatly and perfectly. He had just finished it up and was turning to go back inside when he turned to the man and gave him a hug and said, have a good day. Hmm. The man didn't expect to get a hug from the bag boy, much less to say, have a good day. But you know, he was thinking to himself later in the day, when I get to heaven and I see that young man, will he be changed? Will his Down syndrome be taken away? Will his, well, will his attitude of care of saying, have a good day, be robbed from him? 
he had something special already here on earth that most of us are looking for when we get to heaven. Being blessed, blessing others, sharing love and care. Well, when we turn to Matthew's gospel, we hear about blessings very clearly on the Sermon from the Mount. It's called the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for their righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say unkind things about you. Remember, blessed are you. Rejoice and be glad. Once again, those words from Matthew seem to suggest that being blessed isn't necessarily being rich. Being blessed doesn't mean I'm getting a lot of attention. Being blessed is not what I'm getting, but more of what I'm sharing with others. That's what it means to be blessed, is to have a heart open, willing, and ready to share. Blessings. We can get them very mixed up in our lives. We can think of people who we believe are blessed only to find that, well, they're unhappy or they're sad. It's been a number of years ago, back in the 70s, when Richard Nixon and Watergate were the news. One of the persons involved with Nixon was a man by the name of Chuck Colson. He always thought of his life as a blessed one. He was close to the president. He had power. He had authority. People looked up to him. But then, one night, June the 17th, the Watergate burglary took place, and he lost all that blessedness. He was sent to prison. Before he got to prison, Colson gave his life over to Jesus. Now, a lot of people just thought it was an act. But Colson remained faithful to the Lord through his days in prison, years. And when he got out, he started a prison fellowship ministry to reach out to people who were, like him, in jail. These days, that ministry has grown to 50,000 volunteers across the nation. Colson found out what it meant to be blessed by what he could give to others, not what he could get. So I ask you, are you blessed? Are you ready to be blessed by God? Are you ready to be a part of his kingdom? Are you ready to step up and say, here am I, Lord, send me? That's what our Bible writers today, Paul in Ephesians, Matthew in his gospel are saying. Be blessed by being, well, helpful. Be blessed by being kind. Be blessed by being comforting. And that's what's special. Next, when we are blessed, we are also chosen. We belong to God. God has picked us out. He wants us to be his family. A lady was registering children for school. Two boys came in. She said, what are your birthdays? And the two boys said, mine's April the 6th. And his brother said, mine's April 20th, both on the same year. The teacher register person looked at them and said, how could you be born 20 days apart? Oh. One of the boys said, one of us is adopted. Before she could think about it, she said, which one? And the boy said, 
Well, you know, we don't know. And we asked Dad that question once. And he said, you know, I love you so much, I've forgotten who is and who isn't. You're both my sons. That's the way God looks at us. He adopted us into the kingdom. We usually call that our baptism when we come to be part of the family of God. Chosen, wanted, that's the key. God wanted us. He adopts us because he wants us. He doesn't forsake us. He doesn't ignore us, but he chooses us. If you go back to World War I and World War II, you would have seen posters of Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam with the top hat on, the white hair, and with a finger pointed out. And then at the bottom of that pamphlet or poster were the words, Uncle Sam wants you. Well, God's word tells us that our Lord, our Savior, our Father in heaven wants us. He loves us so much, he sent his son. His son loved us so much, he died on the cross. Our God loves us so much that his spirit fills our hearts and calls us to be the children of God. We are a new creation. That's the way Paul describes us in Corinthians. The old is gone, the new has come forth. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Think of that. We are ambassadors. We are speaking for his family, for his country, if you will, for his church. We are blessed, we are chosen, and we are adopted to be a blessing to others. Yes, God cares for us. Even when we have sinned, even when we fall away, even when we ignore him, he doesn't turn his back, but he remembers us as his children. And that's important all through life, every day of life, the good days, the bad days. We are blessed. In the in-between days, we are blessed. We are chosen. We are his. So take that thought with you today and think of it during the week. What it means to be blessed is to be touched by God's grace. It's to be chosen to be his people and it is to be adopted into his family. Amen. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ.